This is a review of set 6079 Dark Forest Fortress from the Dark Forest line. It was released in the year 1996 and retailed for $50 originally, and according to the box it is 461 pieces. This is the largest set in the Dark Forest line and is one of only three sets making this a very very small castle sub theme. Many see this as sort of a test run for a successor to the Forestman line as this was only released in 1996 and in North America, and like I said, only had three sets. And I've been really getting into Vintage Castle lately, and I've got to say I think this set here is my favorite of the Vintage Castle lines. So here we have the instruction manual, and it's quite a large one. Unfortunately, I do not have the box, and that's definitely not for lack of trying, but I have not been able to find it at a price that I feel is reasonable, as this set is incredibly rare now. But this is what the box art looked like. And then on the back... We'll have to flip it over, but we can see three alternate builds. And I gotta say, I honestly do really like all of these. And these ones in particular that definitely make me wish that LEGO had put instructions for any of these alternate models anywhere online. Because I would love to be able to build these. So before I start building, I just wanted to take a second to highlight this raised base plate. As I've said many times before, and I'm sure I'll say many times again, I love raised base plates. And I would say that this mold here, the mountainous mold with two segments, is probably my second favorite of the raised base plate molds. And this color and printing on it in particular is definitely very sought after and rare because this set was only released in North America. I was quite lucky that growing up a friend gave me and my brother a big tub of Legos when they had outgrown them, and included in that was this base plate. So I have a lot of fond memories of making mocks on this base plate in particular. And I believe I have pictures of one of the castle mocks I made, so if I do, I'll include them here now. Anyways, so the majority of prints on this mold base plate were used in the underwater themes. I believe it came in like light blue and gray for some aqua zone themes. And I do like those a lot, but I definitely think that the more natural green earth tones that this one comes in are way cooler. And so I definitely understand why this base plate is highly sought after and is close to, I think, like $80 on its own now. Okay, so now we can start building. I'm going to do my best to try to keep everything in frame, but as you can see, this is quite a large set with quite a few pieces, so it might go out of frame for a little bit here and there, but I'll do my best.
So here's the completed set, and as you can see, it is quite a large set, even though it only has about 450 pieces. And I definitely think that's because the raised base plate does a ton to increase the size of the set and make it feel much larger than it actually is. And in my opinion, this is just a fantastic playset that is equally visually interesting. And we'll get into it in a second, but first, of course, we got to take a look at our minifigures. So first up here, we have a generic Dragon Master minifigure. And the enemy faction in this set is particularly interesting because it doesn't really fit into one single mold. Thankfully, this figure here is exclusively a Dragon Master's figure. And just for comparison here, I brought in another Dragon Master archer that I have from the Fire Breathing Fortress. So as you can see, he is exactly the same as the one included in this set. But then where things get interesting is when we move to our second Dragon Masters minifigure here. As you can see, he does have the same uh, face and torso print as this Dragon Master Knight here. But interestingly, he has a dark gray helmet, which is not something that we saw in the Dragon Masters line. They all had black helmets. However, one faction that did have dark gray helmets is the Royal Knights. And we just saw two of those Royal Knights in our last review for this sub-theme, the Hemlock Stronghold. But then even more interesting is that his shield here is actually not a Dragon Master shield, but is instead a Black Knight's shield. And while it is still a dragon insignia, the Dragon Master's shield was only in the larger kite shield print that we see in the back there, and I'll get to that in a second. However, it is in green and red with a yellow background, whereas this one is in blue and yellow with a red background. It could be that they just wanted to have a dragon pattern, but there was no kite shield variant of this uh, specific dragon master shield. Although even still, it is a strange inclusion. So I want to quickly jump to the carriage just to continue documenting the strange choices that LEGO used for this set. Here's the actual dragon master shield that I was talking about, and that's what it should look like. And that is the only pattern and uh, size that it came in. But then another important thing to note is that the dragon master colors for their flags are red on top with then yellow below, whereas this one has the Royal Knights colors of red on top with white below. And then of course, because that isn't confusing enough, I went and checked some old Lego catalogs from 1996, and in there they refer to the Knights as Royal Knights, when in reality they're more like some strange combination of Royal Knights and Dragon Masters with even a touch of Black Knights in there. So this isn't the biggest deal, but it is just very odd to me that LEGO so often fails to keep its own factions and sub themes straight. Anyways, let's get back to looking at the minifigures. So next up, we've got our dangly armed skeleton dude. There he goes. And then we've got our four forestmen. And these are actually the same four forestmen that we saw in the earlier two sets. They broke them up two in each set and then decided to include all four in this set. And like I said in those reviews... I really like the look of these guys, um, way more I would say than just the traditional Forestman figures because they actually tried to mix these up, give them different looks entirely rather than just changing one or two colors on the torso and giving them a different colored feather. And still these next two are my personal favorites. Uh, we have this guy with his brown studded tunic and his brown hat, and then he's got that nice accent of a blue feather and blue arms. And again, we see the return of the Forestman crested shields. And I'm glad that they included these shields as wearable shields instead of just putting them into the build like the Forestman sets did. And then we have my favorite of the Forestman. I just like his brown vest with his nice green accenting and then the red feather there. So now we can return to the ambiguous enemy factions cart. And I really like that this is a full-size side build and not something that they skimped out on. As you can see here it is to the Wolfpack Renegades cart, which was actually a standalone set. And even still, the back carriage is bigger than it. And it had too many figures to go on it as well. So in the back of the caravan, we have a treasure chest, of course. And then, as always, you've got to have some gemstones inside the treasure chest. And this carriage is pretty well armed with a spear, shield, sword on this side and then a halberd, and then their banner on the other side. And then the whole back of the card actually lifts up like this to reveal a secret compartment underneath. And inside they've got two gold goblets and some sort of ancient scroll. And this is the same print that we saw in the Dragon Master sub-theme as well. So now we can move on to the actual build. And as I said earlier, I just think this is a fantastic playset. It looks very good displayed, and I love that they made use of every single inch of this base plate. You've got a large tree build here, the tree integrated into the dark forest hideout in the back there, as well as this little outpost out front. 
And then, of course, a carriage to go across the dirt road in the middle there where they can ambush them or entrap them. So let's move in for a closer look. Uh, as I said, this is the outpost area just on the corner. And it doesn't have much going on, but it does have this cool parpet piece. And then, of course, just a little foliage to show that they are in the woods. And then on the right side, we've got this tall lookout tree that also doubles as a jail cell. So you just remove this clip piece here. And then you can slide the jail cell open. And that is where our skeleton buddy is supposed to go. And he must have been in there for a really long time, poor guy. And of course, you can just stand a minifigure right on top there. It's also got this cute little blue window with a torch on the side here. And that can open up just like that. And then turning it around to the back, you've got this tiny little room inside the tree at the base. And that can just be accessed by flipping up this ladder. Nothing really in there, but it is neat that it's there. And I personally like to put my glow-in-the-dark ghost minifigure in there because I have an extra one. And I just feel like that fits perfectly. So next up in the middle here, we have what I would consider to be the weakest part of this set. As it's just another overly large catapult. And for whatever reason, this sub-theme is obsessed with catapults. We saw one in the small set, and then in the middle set, we actually had two for some reason. Although I will give this one points for creativity, as it's built on two ladder pieces, and it is a bit unconventional. You just pull this ladder piece back here, and then it springs out. And it works pretty well, although I do worry that it might be straining the ladder piece whenever you have to push it down like that. So now moving on to the main hideout section of the build. And one thing that I really like the way it was implemented is this tree trap. You just grab this pin right here, and when you pull it out, boom, the whole tree build actually falls down right into the middle of the uh, pathway there. So that's a good way to ambush the guys transporting the treasure as they're going through the forest like that. And while I do love this play feature, one thing that I actually am a little bit worried about is that all the weight of this build falls right on this one flimsy leaf piece. So I just worry that if you did that a lot as a kid, you'd probably uh, break this piece. Although I haven't had that happen to me yet, so maybe I'm just overly paranoid. Because Legos are pretty sturdy. Anyways, up at the top here we have more room to pose our minifigures. Nice outpost area there. And then our flag with the green on top and the red on the bottom. And then you've even got this pulley system that actually goes to the back door here that has a little ramp. And you can just wind it like that to bring the ramp up and close off the stable. And one of my pet peeves for LEGO sets that use string is when they make you tie the string around bricks and then it's not easy to just take it apart and have all the pieces be separated. So this set definitely gets points for just wedging the uh, string right in between there. And you can just easily pull it back out that way and then it's never actually tied to anything so i really do like that so looking inside the stable here we've got this tiny little trough for our horse to eat out of and just enough space to leave their white horse in there we've even got one of these castle wall pieces and i think that is a good use and placement of it in this build and then moving to the hideout they've got this uh, barrel here on the edge as well as a small table with a golden goblet and then even a little leaf build that can slide down there so they can keep an eye on the road before they have to drop the tree on the unsuspecting travelers. And lastly, I like the good use of these blue plates as roof tiles that come at a nice angle there, both on the stable and over here on the main build. So there you have it. That is the Dark Forest Fortress, the largest set in the Dark Forest sub-theme. And really just one of my personal favorite sets right now. Adjusted for inflation, the set would have retailed for $83.03. However, current used prices bring it to a painful $267.77. And that is absolutely driven by the fact that this was only released in North America. And vintage castle sets are highly collectible in and of themselves. And to make this one that is so hard to obtain, and is also a fantastic set in my opinion, makes it quite pricey. Well, I don't think I could recommend spending that amount of money on a single set of this size. I definitely understand why it is one of the most expensive castle sets of all time. And so even if it is not financially reasonable for you to own this set yourself, I do hope that you enjoyed my review of it, and I'm thankful that I was able to share it with you all. So that is my review. Thanks again for watching.